Yes, you're absolutely right. You should be concerned. Low sodium is dangerous for you. And what's happening is you're not only having low sodium, your magnesium is also probably low. And you need to bump that up by either taking magnesium citrate or magnesium torate tablets or spray yourself with magnesium spray or dip yourself in a warm bath with, with uh, Epsom salts or go and take a dip in the ocean. That'll get your magnesium enough. Next, next is you need, to, you need to consider taking salt tablets. So let me say something about salt. Cardiology is telling you to increase your salt intake. That's another lie. And I can give you a whole lecture on that lie. What do you want to know about salt? So what happens when you restrict yourself? Oh, you're going to be on a low salt, low fat diet. Total lie. The low salt is based on zero data. And when you take in less salt, your kidneys detect it. And therefore, the juxtaglomerular apparatus, which is in your kidney, turns on your renin-angiotensin system. That, in turn, holds on to more sodium. That's how it does it. But as a side effect, it makes your blood pressure go high. It makes your potassium go down. I can tell you, my blood pressure has gone Yeah, because when you cut out all that salt, your blood pressure will inevitably come down. But it has other side effects. See? So, one is we want to make sure that you're not getting vasoconstricted so much. And that's why you're getting all these symptoms. It's your salt, potassium, magnesium, and you have microvascular vasoconstriction because you've probably got high renin angiotensin system in your body. I would definitely increase my salt intake. Definitely. You need to be salting your food or take a salt tablet once a day. If your neutrophil levels are low, can you, there's no data on that. But I can tell you that after a prolonged fast, the new neutrophils that will come in because of the bone marrow kicking in will be better. So that when you have a low level, the, the ones that will be there will be better and, and stronger and be able to do the job that they're supposed to do. So higher quality. Ideal vitamin D level, they say between 30 and 60. I say 50 to 60. Well, my, my vitamin D level was 100, and my doctor told me that was way too high. That's too high. That's too high. At 100, you run that because that may actually hurt you. You see, let me, okay, very good point. So this is what's sometimes a problem with us. We think that a little good is, uh, more is even better. No, it's not. Hormones. And vitamin D is a hormone, has a U-shaped curve. So that at small levels, it's going to harm you. Mid levels is good for you. High levels will harm you. So it's a U-shaped curve. So you need to cut back on your vitamin D intake. So if you're on supplements, for the next few months, don't take any. And then three months later, do another vitamin D level on you. You must, you must get that vitamin D level down. That is why if you're going to start your supplements, you need to do a vitamin D level. A vitamin D level only costs $14, unless you go to Quest. <laughs> I think that the more long-term fasts are for disease processes, to treat them and reverse them. And the intermittent fasting, which you do on a daily basis, because this is the definition of intermittent fasting that I need to correct with you. Intermittent fasting meaning time-restricted feeding on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, that's for day-to-day -day maintenance. That's for general health. But if you want to reverse a chronic condition, such as inflammatory bowel disease, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, Alzheimer's, um, uh, sugar, and you want to do that prolonged fast, and you're doing it intermittently, some people call that an intermittent fast. That's why this term, intermittent fasting, it's a bit of a misnomer. That's why I, I, in this lecture, I didn't use it that often because you've got to define what you mean by it. Because some people think that, you know, eating twice a day, breakfast and dinner, I'm doing intermittent fasting. Well, you, you are, but that's a 12-hour fast in between, and, and that's not the true definition of intermittent fasting. So intermittent fasting is time-restricted feeding, okay, or... 24-hour fasts or 36-hour fasts, which are easily done once or twice a week, 
And then you have the more prolonged fasts, the three day fast, the four, five, six, seven, eight days. Those are different. And you're doing those intermittently because you can't do those too frequently. Then you shouldn't do those too frequently. It's a great question. And look, I mean, it's going to be, unless you own a farm and you just go out there and do your own slaughter, it's going to be very hard to find um, the right type of meat today and animals. I agree with you. So I think you need to be a little careful. But in the overall scheme of things, when you're boiling it, you're going to denature some of those bad things. So overall, I don't think it'll be a problem. And there's not that much concentration of toxic things that go into the bone. More toxic things go into the liver because it's stored there and detoxification occurs in the liver. So uh, if, if an animal source is suspect, I wouldn't eat their, their fatty things, uh, which is the liver. Now there is some fat in the bone marrow, I understand that. Um, but overall, no, I haven't read much about toxicity and from bone, I wouldn't worry about it. So is there a particular animal we should be using for the bone broth? Uh, people use chicken, they use mutton, they use goat, they <coughs> use beef, it really doesn't matter. Okay. Any one of those is okay. You see, inevitably, you're always going to get some toxins these days. Whether you like it or not, there's some toxins are going to get into That is why you need a daily prevention program. That's what I'm telling all of you. Number one, don't eat fish more than twice a week. Number two, stop poisoning yourselves by putting estrogen disruptors on your skin every day by putting creams. I need creams. Oh, wait a second. I don't have cream deficiency. Why are you doing it? Why are you, why are you estrogenizing yourself? Already we have a nation of estrogenized men and women. So what's happened is that sperm counts have gone down. Fertility rates have gone down, cancer rates have gone up because, partly because of estrogenization. We've been an estrogenic society. And this all comes from the environment. And not only that, but it comes from the plastics, the phthalates. Please do not put plastics in your food by cooking in those utensils or heating them in microwaves that are not suitable for that. And try not to take any. Uh, any foods that have been put in plastics, basically. And water also is very suspect. The BPH you should all avoid as well. No, there's no such thing as drinking too much water. Um, uh, you know, psychogenic polydipsia is a condition which can occur uh, with, and it causes low sodium when you drink too much water, but you really need to be drinking gallons and gallons. These are psychologically ill patients and usually occurs in middle-aged women. They drink so much water because they just, it's psychogenically, and then they get this condition. But all of us, no, we, we will not get that, no way. I think the monk fruit is okay for sugar. It has not been shown to cause a very high in increase in your insulin level. And as far as the, um, uh, the, the first part was about the nut-based milk. Yeah, I mean, I get asked that a lot. And look, the way I look at it is, uh, you know, you're, you're, uh, well, how many generations ago was that that I said? They didn't have a grinder, okay? They didn't have a mixer. They didn't have all those things. I'm sorry. So, yeah, almonds are good for you, but eat them whole. But almond milk is processed. You don't need milk. You don't need milk, you don't need processed. You don't need almond milk either. It's got a lot of omega-6 in it. And you've got to make sure it's unsweetened. So it's got a lot of omega-6 in it, and it's processed. If you can do without it, do without it. Because I'm going to say something about all juices and all liquids uh, that you, you, you make at home on it. When you eat a nut or any vegetable, already it's getting digested in your mouth. The mastication process is detected by your brain. The brain then sends out messages to GIP in your duodenum and the incretins in your intestine saying, hey guys, in 15 minutes it's coming. <laughs> Get ready. And they, the levels start going up automatically. 
The body is superbly intelligent. Now what happens is that you go and instead, you, you didn't do all that and you just drank the milk. Didn't get a con contact with your saliva. It went in as a job lot into your stomach and then poured itself through the pylorus into the duodenum and GIP went shut up and your insulin levels shut up. So if you measure the insulin response after drinking that versus actually eating the same number of nuts, and I tell you, you cannot eat that many nuts. <laughs> the response in your body is different. Go back to nature. You don't need it. The advertisements look great. The box looks great too. Yeah, that's a great question. Three, five, seven, how do you do all that? You know, it's very individual. It depends on you, how much resilience you have, how much willpower you got, and how sick you really are, your determination that you want to do. And don't jump into a seven day fast. You know, I tell people, look, take small steps first. Do the daily things, do the weekly things, and then maybe once a, once a week do the 36 hour fast and see how you feel. Get to know your body again. Say, hello stomach, hello brain, how am I? And get to know yourself first. And then, after you've done that for a couple of months, then plan it. And then I tell people that if you're gonna do this, my personal view is don't do a three day fast. If you're gonna do something, go to a five day fast. Because at three days, you just got into the maximum benefit, and then you're going to stop. And you'll be feeling fantastic at the end of your third day, and then you're going to get the most ultimate improvement on your fourth and fifth day. So if you want to do something, my advice to you is do all this daily stuff and weekly stuff, and then do the five-day water fast. That's the way to go. A five-day water fast is the way to go. Oh, honey is fine. Um, it's 60% fructose, 40% glucose. It's natural. The bees make it, and, and it's wonderful. But you know what? If I was in the wild, man, I, I, I'll, I'll never get up there. So maybe if someone dropped it and I got some honey once a year, I'm lucky. What I'm trying to say is that it's not an available natural product to you all the time. So what we do is we start using it every day. It's a rare thing to find, come across a honey thing in the wild, in a normal state. So yeah, I don't mind honey. I'll have it. I'll have it maybe once every two months. So don't use it every day. What I do use quite a lot of, and I know this is going to sound crazy, is bee pollen. Now, I love bee pollen. You put that with, with a little bit of food and you just put on your cereal or whatever. You, you know, your, your probiotic. And you all should be on probiotics like kefir because you're killing your, because the antibiotics are killing your, your gut bacteria every day. So you should all do that. So that's what I use, but I don't use honey. Now once in a while I'll have honey, once every two months, but don't make it a regular thing. It's extremely high in fructose. So, and if you're gonna take it, it's really literally quarter teaspoon. Absolutely, you should. When you exercise, and this, by the way, applies to all of you. When, you. when should you exercise? You should exercise when you're fasting. So when are you fasting? First thing in the morning. So if you're going to eat and then go to the gym, you actually put on less muscles. Same amount of exercise. But when you exercise, and this is counterintuitive to what even your... Your, 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 your gym masters will tell you, no, you must exercise in a fasting state. So even on a day-to-day -day basis, when your stomach is empty, when you're at your lowest, that's when you should be exercising. If you want to put on more muscle and get all the benefits and of, of exercise, that's when you should be there. Now, as far as fasting is concerned, yes. In fact, you should do at least 30 minutes of gym work every day that you're fasting. But my problem is that on the fourth and the fifth day, you will want to do one hour instead of half an hour. <laughs> Most of the people I talk to on the fourth and fifth day, they say, my God, I was unstoppable. I got up, I actually got up and went to the gym because I just needed to do it. I had so much energy. Yeah. 
a seven day fast every six months. Every six months you do a seven day fast, I'm telling you, you will become a different person. Your whole immune status will change. Your, 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 your stem cells, which are your original blueprint, your birthright. Your stem cells are your birthright. That's your original template. Those cells will come into your system and your entire immunity will change. I would like you to come back and tell us a year from now, after doing two seven day fasts, how you felt. What did, what did you do to your rheumatoid? I'm telling you, you'll have fantastic results. Fantastic results. You must try it though. Look, there's no, first of all, it doesn't cost anything. It's free. Fasting is free. Number two, you don't have a gym. You don't have to go to the gym. You don't have to pay anybody. It's convenient, you do it on your own. And when you're doing this fasting, don't tell everybody, because you'll get too much sympathy. Oh, she, who are you, you know? <laughs> he told you to fast. That's so uncivilized. <laughs> so don't tell anybody. Tell your best friend, whoever's going to do it with you. And then just get on with it. Don't share it with anybody. Because that's what I find, that people who share it with my guy, they, they don't help you. Keep it to yourself. He does have data to show that his supplement, which is the fasting mimicking diet that you're talking about, where he gives you all these packets to take for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, they do seem to produce the biochemical changes that we want. There's data for that. So there's absolutely no doubt that it does work. And I like it. But it's a supplement. It's man-made, and it costs a lot of money. Now, if you want to try that out, you do it and see how you feel. He has the recipe in the book. Yes, he has all the recipes so in the book, so you can do it yourself, too. But my advice is be on my common sense diet that I told you about, and then just do the water fast. There's nothing better than just a water fast. If you're going to fast, you just do a plain water fast. Okay. Nothing else. Plain water fast.